So how do we take bloated soft stars as seen in this image and turn them into nice, tight, much more well-defined stars like this? This tends to distract less from the nebulosity and it, it just makes the whole image appear a little more well-defined. So today I want to show you a technique I've been using to de-bloat uh, problematic stars. Let's get to it. So the first thing we need to do is perform an auto stretch on our SHO image and then separate the stars from the nebula using a process like Star Exterminator or StarNet. Uh, and the reason I do a, a full auto stretch before removing is so that it brings all the bloat with the stars. Uh, otherwise it leaves it in the nebula and that makes it much more difficult to process the nebula part. It leaves magenta artifacting or rings. Uh, and also uh, it brings a lot of the small stars into the star image as well. And I want to keep those in there if I can, if possible. So uh, when I separate the stars, I end up with a, a nebula that looks like this. And uh, I went ahead and finished an edit on that. And that looks like this. This is what I ended up with. So that's what we're going to combine our, our stars with. And we want them to be de-bloated before we do that. Otherwise, we end up with something like this. This is uh, the edited nebula with unedited stars. We want to go to this. Um, nice, tight, smaller stars. Um, you can see even the small stars are in there. So uh, let's get to it. When I separate the stars, here's the star only image, and you can see it brings the bloat, it brings a bit of noise with it as well, because it was fully stretched. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is apply some TGV denoise uh, to this image to get rid of the noise. So I've already saved an icon here. If you haven't checked out my blog post about this, I, I did a write-up on this process here. I'm just going to go ahead and apply this now. Okay, that process is finished. Let's take a look at the stars now. You can see it cleaned up the noise quite a bit. Let me zoom way in here and I'll undo the process. There's the noise. There's the final product. Now I'm going to put this image uh, up for download on my website, uh, actually in the blog, so that you can kind of follow along if you want to practice this process on these stars. Uh, you can do that by downloading this file and, and bring it into PixInsight. All right, so the next step then is to look at our three separate data sets here. Uh, and I've saved these all here on the desktop or on my workspace. Um, here is the sulfur. I have it set in a preview here, as you can see, so we can look at the stars uh, closely. And that's what we're looking at. We want to find out which one has the best looking stars, the tightest looking stars, the least bloated. So in this case, here's the O3, here is the H-alpha, and here is the sulfur. And just looking at these three previews, I think it's pretty obvious that the best-looking stars are in the O3 channel. And so I'm going to choose to work with this one. Now it's important to note that if you decide to use your O3 stars for this process, uh, you want to make sure there aren't any large stars in the field of view because uh, a lot of O3 filters um, will... Uh, have ringing around the stars, the brighter stars, that is. So, uh, we, we, or halos, I should say, but we, we don't want that. So, in this image, we don't have any uh, super bright stars that are causing any haloing. So, I'm going to go ahead and choose this data set to work with for now. So, I'm going to go ahead and minimize these other ones. And then the first thing we're going to do is we, we want to apply an auto stretch to this, which I've already done, and then remove the stars from the O3 because we're going to use those as illuminants for our SHO stars. Um, so uh, I've gone ahead and removed them. And here is what it looks like. This is the O3 image. And you can see there's some noise in here as well. So uh, I've gone ahead and saved a TGV denoise for this, and I'm going to apply it to the image. OK, that's finished. Let's just kind of zoom around here and look. Looks pretty good. It did a good job of eliminating the noise. Um, so let me close this TGV to noise out. And I'm going to also put this image up on the blog for download because uh, so, you're going to need this to work your stars uh, if you downloaded the previous one. So this will be up 
for download if you want to continue working along. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the LRGB uh, combination process. And it's already saved here. Um, you could just drop and drag this here. It's kind of a neat little trick. All right, and so uh, you can see I've deselected R, G, and B. We don't need that. Um, everything else is pretty much standard. Uh, you could use chrominance noise reduction if you wanted to, um, choosing not to in this one. So let me open my SHO stars again, and we're going to just apply this and see what we get. So this is just applying the luminance to the SHO stars. Okay, it's finished. Let me zoom in here. And you can see um, it's made quite a difference. It's, it's given these some definition. Um, of course, they still look terrible. We're going to fix that in a second. Uh, but the key here is we just wanted to um, tighten the overall stars up. And I'll undo it so you can see the difference. That was without, and this is with the O3 luminance. So uh, now we just got to get rid of this bloat. We need to eliminate the bloat. Uh, so the next step is to, uh, we're going to open our O3 stars up again. And I'm going to create a duplicate of this, a copy, a clone. That way I still have my O3 stars uh, in their fairly original state there. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a binary mask out of this clone. And the way you do that is uh, you open the binarize process. I've saved an icon for that as well, but here are my settings. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and create preview down here. And if you do a uh, if you preview it, you can see it just turns the each pixel either black or white. It's pretty straight ahead. But you can control this slider. Um, the further left you go, the more it covers. Uh, and then the further right you go, the less it covers. So what I'm looking for when I do this is I want to see if it's covering even the small stars. And the way you can do that is go up here to this preview button, and you can turn the preview on and off. And just look at some of the smaller stars and see if it's covering. Looks like it is to me. Um, so I'm going to keep this right here. Maybe I could actually go a little bit darker. Let's see. I don't want, I don't want these uh, larger stars to be too covered. We don't want to cover the bloat as well. Uh, we want to make sure that the bloat is not covered. So uh, I'm going to go with that. I'm going to apply it to the entire image. And that, that was a quick process. So now we have um, a binary mask. Uh, the next step is to uh, soften these edges. We're going to use convolution to soften the edges a bit because you can see they're very harsh. So I've saved an icon here for that, and I'll uh, go ahead and preview that so you can see. This is about how soft we want them to look. Uh, essentially, these are going to be the edges of our final star image, so we want to make sure they look good. We don't want them to be jagged or rough. So this is about right. I'm going to go ahead and apply this. You can see I've just set it for 1.3. Everything else is standard here. Okay, so the convolution has now been applied, and now we have a mask. Uh, so now let's open up our stars again. And what we're going to do is apply our binary mask to the SHO stars. Now I'm going to turn on so we can see here. This is very important. Uh, we need to make sure that we invert the mask because we don't want to protect uh, the background. We want to protect the stars. So to do that, mask, invert. I guess you could also control shift I. That will also invert the mask. Uh, but now you see it's protecting the stars only and uh, the background is left and the bloat is uh, unprotected. And that's what we want because we are going to open our curves now. And uh, here I'll reset this to show you how to kind of work this. Place two anchor points here. One towards your highlights, one towards your midtones. And then the third one down here by your shadows. And that's the one we're going to work with. Um, let me go ahead and create a preview. I already have one here, actually. Let me click on the preview. Close some of these windows so you can see. Now if we begin to work this shadows uh, 
anchor point here, you'll see the bloat slowly disappear and your stars will tighten up quite nicely. Um, and this looks pretty good to me. So if I undo the preview, you can see it really eliminates that bloat quite well. And uh, the smaller stars aren't disappearing, they're pretty well protected. So this is a point where uh, if, if it didn't look good to you, if this doesn't look good to you, you would want to examine your, your mask. If the edges are too rough, you might need to add some convolution. If some of the smaller stars are disappearing, you might need to redo the mask so that those are included uh, during the binarize part of the mask making. So uh, this looks good to me. I'm going to apply it to the entire image. Now you don't want to go too far with this, of course, because you'll see it just gets maybe a little too much. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to settle for this right here. Let's apply it to the entire image. Now, let's just zoom around and check it. These all look pretty good. Let me undo it. That's what it looked like. And here it is with the curves. So uh, I like this. this. This is nice and tight. So the, the last step is to just determine if you want to keep the magenta in the stars. Uh, your stars may not have as, nearly as much magenta in them. It just depends on your filters and the data. Uh, but in this case, I feel like it's a very strong uh, magenta, so I want to get rid of this. And the way to do that is to invert it, apply an SCNR green to it, and then reinvert it. That will pretty much kill all of the magenta. But the first thing, before you invert it, you want to make sure that you turn off all the masks. Otherwise, uh, it's only going to invert the unmasked part. So uh, I've cleared that. I'm going to hit Control i to invert this image. I'm going to open my green SCNR and just hit it with a full, a full 100%. Okay, and then re-invert. And you can see the magenta is gone. Now I have more of a orangish hue to it. Uh, so at this point, uh, I'm just going to add a little bit of saturation. Let's see here. Do a preview. That looks pretty good to me. Flip it on and off just to check it. Okay. And then I'm going to apply this to the entire image. Okay, so now our stars are ready. They are ready for recombination. So let me close that out. I'm going to open my saved pixel math here. Uh, so I'm going to combine my nebula with the show stars edit here. Let's see what we end up with. This is it. So I think this looks pretty good. Let me zoom in here and make sure there's not a lot of artifacting or anything like that. It looks like the bloat is gone. These look pretty tight to me. Pretty good. I don't think I need to do any further editing of this. Uh, looks pretty good. Now let's just as a reminder, here's what the unedited version. These are the unedited stars and you can see lots of noise, lots of bloat versus versus our final image here. Let me make it big for you. Okay, uh, now some people might like uh, a more crowded star field or, or larger stars and that's totally fine. I just prefer them to be, uh, to, to not distract from the nebula. I, li I like the nebulosity to be the prime focus of, of the image. So uh, that's it. Uh, now theoretically, this would work uh, with a one shot color camera. You can do the same process. You just split the RGB channels and see if see if any of them are are the stars are tighter in any of the three images. Then use that as a luminance. Uh, if you can't use uh, if they're all the same, uh, then I would just try the making a binary mask from a separated star image and uh, trying the curves trick to to bring down the shadows a bit. And I think that'll tighten them up a little bit as well. But I found uh, finding the smallest star set really uh, it makes a difference um, I, I think it really did a good job here so that's that's the method I've, I've been using to sort of fix uh, troubled data to uh, problematic data uh, so that's it uh, I hope you guys have learned something I hope you try this technique out um, and uh, as always feedback and comments are welcome hope to see you on the next one